If a loan shark told you you had 24 hours to make $10,000, would you be able to code up an AI to play blackjack? In today's video, we're going to teach an artificial intelligence to play blackjack using off-policy Monte Carlo control. Previously, we took a look at teaching an AI to play blackjack using Monte Carlo control without exploring starts. If you haven't seen that video, here's a quick refresher. Monte Carlo methods are used when you have a system in which you do not know the state transition functions. What does that mean? It means that you do not know the probability of ending up in some new state, given you're in some state and take an action. So in blackjack, what does that mean? It means that if you have some combination of cards and you hit, meaning you get another card from the dealer, you don't know the probability of ending up in any other state. Here the states are just defined as the sum of your, uh, the sum of your cards, whether or not you have a usable ace, and the dealer's showing card. So Monte Carlo methods allow you to solve reinforcement learning problems for which you don't have those state transition functions. It does it by playing the game. Since you are trying to learn things by experience, you're uh, going to have to deal with something called the explore-exploit dilemma. <clears throat> the explore-exploit dilemma deals with the conundrum all reinforcement learning agents face. They have some set of uh, actions they can take in any given state of the environment. They know that one action is really good, but they don't know if some other action could be better. So what proportion of the time do you spend exploring versus exploiting the best known action? In Monte Carlo control without exploring starts, we use something called epsilon greedy uh, with the decaying epsilon, meaning that some percentage of the time you choose a random action and the predominant uh, amount of the time you choose the best known action. And that proportion of random actions you take decreases over time so that you eventually settle on the greedy strategy. That uses a single policy, uh, which nobody says you have to have only one policy, right? You can have two policies. You can have three policies, I suppose. Off policy, off policy methods rely on using two policies, one policy to perform exploration of the environment and one policy to learn the optimal actions. In today's video, we're going to focus on using off policy methods to learn to play blackjack. <clears throat> you want to start out with your typical imports, Jim, NumPy, and Matplotlib. Go ahead and make your environment and set up your hybrid parameters. We're going to explore 5% of the time. That's our epsilon. Gamma is 1.0. It's an undiscounted task. Discounting accounts for the fact that sometimes the agent doesn't know if it's actually going to receive a reward. So it doesn't make sense to give all future rewards equal weight when you don't even know you're going to get them. However, in blackjack, uh, the rewards are certain, so we use a gamma 1.0. We have a sequence of lists to account for the spaces in the environment. Um, the agent sum space accounts for the possible sum of the player's cards. So you can get anything from an ace all the way up to a face card, ace worth one, and then you have two all the way up through the face cards, which are worth 10. I only have it up to 21 because once you hit 21, you win. If you go over, you bust. Um, you don't actually choose any cards. So there are no actions associated with going over 21. The dealer has a card showing. Uh, that can be either an ace through a face card. So it's in the range one through uh, 10. Uh, whether or not you have a, a usable ace, either false or true, and then your action space is just either a 0 or 1, stick meaning don't give me a card, and hit meaning give me a card, an empty list to construct the state space. So in off policy methods, what you want to do, you have two policies, right? So you have the agent's estimate of the expected future rewards, which is the Q function. It's a function of the states and actions. You have some relative uh, weighting here, C. Uh, which tells you the relative weights of those particular trajectories occurring under both the target and behavior policy. So we have to initialize these two quantities. Both get a function of zero for all states and actions in our state and action space. I also initialize a state space, uh, which is just uh, the states minus the actions. The purpose of that is that we want to initialize the target policy. The target policy is what we're going to use to calculate the optimal behavior in our blackjack environment. And this is just set to the argmax of the agent's estimate of ex discounted expected future rewards. Uh, this is how we calculate the argmax. Recall that the built-in numpy argmax function takes the uh, first element of a tie uh, of a tied um, a tied list with with equal values. So if you have both the stick and hit having the same value, then the argmax will the numpy argmax will just select the stick function always, whereas here we'll alternate between stick and hit. We're going to play a million games, and each episode gets its own set of memory. 
uh, to keep track of the state action and reward functions, uh, parameters. Every 100,000 or so episodes, we're going to print out a place marker to the terminal. And we're going to use an Epsilon greedy, Epsilon soft behavioral policy. So what that means is um, for every state in the state space, we're going to calculate a random number. If that random number is less than our Epsilon, one is less than one minus Epsilon, we're going to take the greedy action, which is just d pulled directly from our target policy. Otherwise, we're going to select it random from one of the actions in the action space. Top of every episode, you want to reset the environment, set your done flag to false. And to play the game, you select an action from your uh, behavior policy. Uh, so NP random choice just takes the uh, random choice from a list. In this case, if we are doing a greedy action, the list only has one element, so it automatically picks that action. And if it's uh, an exploratory move, it will take at random either stick or hit. Go ahead, perform that action, get your new state, and append that transition to your agent's memory. So I've just broken out the observation, which is the state of the system, into its constituent parts, which are the player's sum, the dealer's showing card, and whether or not the player has a usable ace, the action the agent took, and the reward it received. And then set your current state to the new state. When the episode is over, go ahead and append the terminal state action and reward to the memory. At the end, what you want to do, at the end of every, every episode, that is what you want to do, is you want to iterate backwards over the agent's memory and find the uh, returns that followed the time the agent encountered the state. So we have this last flag to skip the terminal state. Let um, me scroll up here. So we are iterating over the reversed memory and constructing a state action tuple out of the state in action. Skip the terminal state on subsequent states. Update your relative weighting with the for a particular state in action for the weight. And then the uh, agent's estimate of the discounted future rewards gets updated according to the following update equation. It's just equal to the weight divided by this C fa factor multiplied by the new sample G, which is the return, and its old estimate. Here we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did in the target policy, which is to calculate the argmax with a random tiebreaker. And the neat thing about, uh, or actually, I guess not really the neat thing, but the weakness of the off policy methods for Monte Carlo control is that if you take a suboptimal action, then it goes ahead and breaks out of the learning loop. So it only really learns from greedy actions. So this is actually a shortcoming of the class of algorithms. Now, if you read Sutton and Bardo uh, online, you can find that uh, this is an open question in reinforcement learning, what, how, exactly how suboptimal this is. And we're going to see how suboptimal it is uh, in a moment. <clears throat> so then you have to calculate the relative probabilities of selecting that particular action under either your behavior or the target policies. So if the length of your behavior policy is just one, it means you took a greedy action. And so the probability of that happening was one minus epsilon. If it is greater than one, you know that you selected um, you selected one of the other actions at random. And so that's just epsilon divided by the number of actions. You want to update your weight uh, to one over the probability. It's a multiplicative factor and update the G, which is just the the discounted future returns. Next, we use our decaying epsilon. So this is all of the learning for the algorithm from this chunk all the way down to here is where all the learning takes place. And similar to what you do in uh, supervised learning where you have a training and test set, I like to split things out into a training sequence of games and a testing sequence of games. So I use a million games to train the dang thing. And then I'm going to take a thousand games and go ahead and test it. So let's scroll down here. So we're going to test for a thousand episodes and keep track of the rewards per episode. I'll keep a running total of the total reward, uh, as well as uh, just some integers to keep track of wins, losses, and draws. You're going to play 1,000 games, resetting each game at the top and resetting your done flag. And you play in the exact same way you play in the training phase, except you don't bother appending anything to a memory because you're not learning anymore. At the end of each episode, go ahead and tally up the total reward you've received. So you get a running total over the course of all 1,000 games and go ahead and assign that to your no list, uh, your NumPy array. <clears throat> so here I have the running total of wins, losses, and draws. So 
if you end up getting a 21 on the very first deal, it's called a natural. You get more than one. You get a 1.5 payout. So if the reward was one or greater, then you know you won. If the reward was zero, you know it was a draw. If the reward was minus one, you know you lost. Don't be a loser. Nobody likes a loser. At the end, just go ahead and divide all of those by the total number of games played and plot or print their respective ratios to the terminal. Uh, at the end of the games, also, we're going to go ahead and, and plot the results. So let's go ahead and run that now. Off policy pie. And this is going to take a while to run. And while it's running, if you want to go ahead and get the code to this, please check out my GitHub. The link is in the description. I post all the code to my YouTube videos there. Uh, so that way you don't have to type along. That's why I don't do interactive typing sessions because, well, uh, it takes too much time and it's much easier to, for you to just get the code from the GitHub. Let's pause for a moment and uh, reflect while this code runs. One other thing. Apparently newborns scream a lot. Nobody told me that. You know, all these funny things that you find out when you become a parent that nobody ever told you. They never bothered to say, hey, kids scream, they wail, they're inconsolable, and uh, you're not going to get much sleep. So thanks, world, for not telling me all the shit I needed to know. And so here you can see the performance of our agent over the course of the 1,000 test games. Let me remove this a little bit. And you can see that this is the cumulative sum as the agent plays over the course of the 1,000 games. Uh, at some point, if it had started to do better, you would see an uptick in this graph. And what you're seeing here, since the sum is negative, it win, or sorry, it loses the predominant majority of the time. Um, uh, OBS Studio isn't cooperative with showing my terminal, so I'm just going to insert a screenshot of my terminal here. And you can see that the agent, in fact, only wins about 28.7% of the time. Now, if you had watched my previous video on Monte Carlo control without exploring starts, you would see that we had won 44% of the time in that case, which is, of course, much better. Nothing to write home about. You're not going to beat the casino, um, but it's significantly better than the 28.7% of the time. So I think this happens because the algorithm only really learns from greedy actions. So if you have a, take a non-greedy action, then it breaks out of the learning uh, loop. And so it's a bit of a uh, suboptimal uh, strategy for Monte Carlo methods. Now, what's cool is that it works really well in other algorithms such as Q-learning, which is an off-policy um, model-free learning method. Um, click here to see my video on teaching an agent to play cart pole with Q-learning, uh, as well as double Q-learning. Uh, so uh, more of the story here is that uh, the off-policy methods in Monte Carlo control are not very efficient, not very effective. You're far better off using something like exploring starts or without exploring starts when you use Monte Carlo methods. But nevertheless, the off-policy methods form the foundation of much of reinforcement learning. I hope this is helpful. If you like the content, uh, go ahead and leave a comment, thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.